Okay, yep. So Kansas City 2-5, uh, optional $10 straddle on the button, which is where actually everyone is straddling. So it's playing 2 five, 10. Yep. Um, 1,700 effective, eight-handed. Um, so... I'm let me like, just uh, let me for, just say something real quick here too, because I get this question often about button straddles. Button straddles kind of suck. I feel like in hold them, it's really weird when you've got players that are doing it. You're kind of at a disadvantage when you're not. If everybody else is doing it, one of the, the issues because I, I see this too with some guys that don't get it, the takers, quote unquote, who will just Mississippi straddle in position when nobody else is doing it. I just I, it, it's just kind of bad. Um, there, there's nothing like straddling under the gun, which is fine, which is, you know, going to be slightly negative EV, but button straddles, they force the, the blinds to play correctly. I just tend to think it kind of kills the game a little bit, but I digress. Okay. 1700 effective eight handed. Right. And, uh, uh, heroes on the button. Okay. Um, so middle position MP1, he's the main villain. Um, he raised, he opens the 30, which standard raise was 30 to 40. Okay. Um, Hijack and cut off both call, and I call with Ace of Clubs, Nine of Hearts. Ace of Clubs, Nine of Hearts. So, I mean, for anybody that thinks that this is not a call, the hero's on the button here and There's getting too a much price. Money. Yeah, I, I assume the blinds go first, right? So no one can squeeze you here. Blinds right? go first, right? Correct. Right. So Nobody behind. So yeah. you're closing the action. So people will defend here with Ace Nine off in the big blind. Of course, you're going to defend here on the button and to be honest with you in this spot i'm probably defending very wide like maybe any two suited cards maybe not the worst ones like seven do suited and eight do suited but you know you're it's 30 60 90 plus the blinds like you're getting like a price of like five six to one i have a hard time folding uh, a lot of hands here in this spot on the button obviously ace nine off is going to be a slam dunk call for me I mean, I suppose you could throw in like a block or three bet, but whatever. So the pot's probably like 130, 135, something like that, right? Yeah, like 130. Okay, yep. Oh, okay, so flop is eight of clubs, ten of clubs, four of diamonds. Eight of clubs, ten of clubs, four of diamonds, okay. Uh, and it checks through. Okay. Checks through, okay. So turn is the jack of clubs. The Jack of Clubs, that's interesting. So you've got open-ended now with a nine, and you have the Ace of Clubs, right? You've got the Nut Flush. Yeah, right? so I have the blocker on the Nut Flush. I uh -huh. have uh, blocker on the straight. Yep. Um, initial Razor, he bets 75. So MP1, 75, okay. So it folds to me, and I decide to get a little aggressive, kind of play like I may have a flush. I raise the 210. So what's interesting, I mean, interesting here is, is that you say you play it like a flush. I mean, are you, here's the thing about when people represent flushes that come in when they don't bet the flop, especially in position. Here, here's my question. Now, I know that we don't always bet a flush draw in this given scenario, although the preflop raiser is checked and the other two people have checked. But I guess my question is, if you're not betting a flush draw on the flop, are you raising the turn? when you make the flush. It's a little bit inconsistent, I feel like, especially with a low flush. It's just something to point out here. Yeah, that's a good point. My thinking at the time was, I thought it was kind of a little light continuation C-bet, like a, like a delayed C-bet. And I was, I was thinking I could either take it down right there or bet large on a, on a blank river. And I have a lot of equity. You no, know, no and, point, and, and I'm... And and I don't really have that much of an issue with your because when you whenever you have a hand that has this much equity, it can't be that bad, right? To to raise, I'm just pointing something out here. Um, it is interesting though because I don't know when MP1 checks the flop and then bets turn. I don't know if he's suddenly betting like Ace King here. Uh, I just don't know how many folds you're gonna get. That's the only thing that I would say here too. Right, buddy. I mean, honestly, I would have been okay with a fold here, but I'm also okay with a call. So okay, so you so you raise it up to two ten, okay? And and he calls. Okay, so MP1 calls. So we're gonna put in four twenty here. So now it looks like the pot's what like five fifty five, five five fifty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So River is the Queen of Clubs. Okay. So the Queen of Clubs, and for the people who are might be listening to this on the podcast. Sometimes I 
Well, I usually don't forget to do this, but with a lot of people watching now, sometimes I forget. It's eight. It's ten of clubs, eight of clubs, four of diamonds. The turn is the jack of clubs. And the river now is the queen of clubs, which puts a one-liner out there to a straight flush, right? A nine of clubs is a straight flush, right? Correct, correct, Okay. Yep. So you having the ace, stiff ace of clubs here, you actually have the second nut flush. Right. And I, it's in, also interesting, the distribution of suits, the queen, the jack, and the ten are out there. So it really, yeah, it's so only... how does he have a nine of clubs? It's kind of... Well... Well, we'll get to that in a second, but the only thing here that the guy could have that's even looks like a high flush is just the king of clubs, right? Because the nine's Correct. a straight flush. Everything else is out right. there. Yeah. So, so. Uh, villain leads for 400. Wow. V1 leads for 400. Now, this is a spot where... A lot of people tend to disagree with me in a lot of hands where I'm like, I'm going to make a thin value raise. I'm going to raise in a given situation. And people are like, oh, what what's going to call that's worse, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, there's all things, there all kinds of things that can call that's worse. However, in this particular case here, I actually think that you don't raise in this spot because it's so clear cut here with these four flush runouts that anyone can have one card. The issue really is, is that I would find it very hard to believe that someone would take the king of clubs for this kind of line. Cause it's for the same reasons we talked about kind of stupid because they lose to the ace and the nine. So what are they hoping that you call them with the seven or the eight? Oh, you know, the eight is out there. The queen, the jack and the 10 are out there. So what are they hoping for, that you call with the seven? And if for some reason they did have like the king of clubs, they can never call a raise here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that. Uh, yeah. I just, this one's clear cut to me that it's yeah, just I a call. Yeah, I thought about it for a little bit just because I was, you know, I'm like, well, I don't think he has a nine of clubs. The only way I think he has a nine of clubs is if he has pocket nines with the nine of clubs. And then you'd wonder if that would, you wonder if nines with the nine of clubs would take this kind of line um right. in this particular spot but still even if he doesn't really have like only even if he only has nines with the nine of clubs like one percent of the time because of the extreme nature of the board if you can't get called by anything worse it's still a call you can have the best hand here 99 percent of the time and it's still a call right because when you raise you have to get called by a hand that is uh, worse than yours more than 50% of the time, right? Because you're just getting, you're giving, when you raise at the end, it's just a one-to-one -one scenario. You know, he bets 400, you, you're getting pot odds now, but once you put in a raise past 400, you're only getting one-to-one -one on, the, on, the, on the play, you know? Right, and then one of the reasons I, also another reason I didn't raise, I would have had to make it at least 800, and then I have, I don't have that much money behind. So if he jams, I have to fold, but would it change if we were like, Three or four thousand deep, would you raise it then, or still no? I, I just, I, I don't even think it's a function of stack size here, because once somebody puts in a raise, when you have a situation where anyone can really have one card that fills in the nuts, th there's just not going to be a bluffing for to coming back over the top. And when you look at the hand, you have way more nine acts of clubs, I think, than he does in this spot. So I, I just, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it really. I don't think it really matters if, you know, but if you did click it and then the guy jammed, I mean, I, I just don't know how you could possibly, you know, I don't know how you could possibly fold, but I don't really see value in clicking it here. Right. Yeah. And I did. I just called. I called. Okay. So hero calls. Uh huh. And he says, I have the second nuts and he turns over king of, king of clubs, queen of hearts. This, so he's <laughs> P1 I has said, king. no, I have the second nut. Right, right. I, so he doesn't properly necessarily read the board, per se, yeah, correctly, yeah, right? Right, exactly. in this particular situation. Um, I don't know if he didn't see the nine of clubs, or maybe he just misspoke, but I think that you did, you know, the turn is probably close, but I don't think that you can raise here when there is a one-liner out here. Um, to a straight flush. And uh, I mean, to be honest, it, 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 again, I go back to what I said here before. It's really a stupid bet by him, right? 
the sizing? Yeah, if I'm in his place, I mean, honestly, if he checks it to me, I'm probably going to bet maybe 250, 300. I'd probably check call there with the king, maybe, if it's not huge, but I don't know that I would lead there. Well, but the sizing, though, he bet 400 into 550. Huge. I, I just don't, yeah. I, I don't see what, what it, his hand is way too in between to make that play. Because again, if you look at the board distribution here, the queen, the jack, the 10, and the eight are all out there. And the nine is a straight flush, right? So it just doesn't make any sense, you know? I don't know if he, I don't think he, he probably shouldn't call if you raise. Um, no, I don't just, think so either, but he w- shouldn't have taken the line he took. So I'm thinking he probably would have called. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I still think, you know, not to be results oriented, but boy, even if you make it like 850 there, the king of clubs really shouldn't. I mean, there's two different cards that you can have to beat him, right? When right. he's got the king of clubs, the ace, stiff ace, or the nine. Just, uh, it's kind of bizarre. But anyways, John, appreciate the call. Thank you very much. Nice little call. Thanks, Bart.